In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. Let me welcome an expert on trauma today. With me in the studio is Dr. Ingo Schäfer, a psychiatrist and psychotherapist who heads the Trauma Outpatient Unit at the University of Hamburg. Hello. Hello. Welcome to In Good Shape. You're treating refugees with trauma, so how likely is it that they will benefit from treatment? That of course depends on the individual situation a person has. But what can be said is that we do have evidence-based treatments um, that can help people and we can also use them in, in refugee populations. And I imagine that is very, very difficult because they don't speak our language, they don't speak German, usually they speak many different languages of the world, sometimes English as a foreign language. Mm -hmm. So do you treat them in English or how do you do this? No, we usually have to um, have interpreters to help us, uh, which of course makes the therapy a bit more complicated and more difficult to organize, but that's the way we have to do it. Okay, so, so we will later talk about some different um, therapy techniques, but first this question, if you treat a trauma, will there always be traces in the brain or can a trauma be completely healed? Yeah, that's what survivors often ask. Will I get rid of that? Will, will it disappear? And what we have to tell them is that, of course, it will be a part of your history, a part of your biography, but we can try to help you to, um, to live better and to lose at least some and maybe all of the symptoms you have at the moment. But your hope is that they will uh, be able to lead a normal life after the therapy? That's the aim, but it's also important to tell people that it can be that some things um, will still persist, but we try, of course, to help them to, to get healthy again. So, so one method in therapy is talking about the traumatic event. Is it very, very difficult for traumatized patients to even speak about it or are they speechless? There are several reasons why that can be difficult. One is that um, the, the nature of the traumatic memory can be that they do, don't even have excess uh, and the, the words for it. The other thing is that people often are ashamed about the things that happened. There's also a cultural aspect to that, that it can be difficult to, to talk about many things. So speechlessness can be an issue and we have to, to uh, look in the therapy that we find ways to come over that. Right. So trauma happens inside the brain and how they, the, the people um, have views about themselves and views about other people and the world. So, so what usually happens inside the brain? I mean, on the psychological level, um, what you just said, it's um, the ways they look on themselves and on others. They are ashamed, they feel guilty that they survived, maybe even uh, they feel that after torture, for instance, that it, they will not be a part of the normal society anymore. Uh, and at the same time, there can be a persistent um, idea of threat, even in safe situations. And taken together, that's, that can lead to social withdrawal and uh, can make a, a bad situation in their daily lives. Our viewer Esteban Malvreo wants to know um, if having a trauma is a disease, if it's, if it's always like um, post-traumatic stress disorder or if having a trauma can perhaps with no disease at all. The first thing that's important is to, to separate the event from the right. consequences. And the traumatic event itself is not a disease and there are many people that can come over such events and uh, in fact are resilient to them. Uh, but there is a spectrum of, of consequences that can follow. One is PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, but also others like depression, anxiety, substance abuse. So, um, so it's not automatically the case that people suffer from those consequences, but it will be a, a certain part. I find it really, really amazing that eye movements can have such an effect on our psyche and our mental capacities. So, so what's your experiences with EMDR? I personally have good experiences with it. I also use it in treatment, but it's important to say that, as you said, we don't know how it works yet. Right. And there are also other treatments. I mean, the most important thing is uh, to focus on the traumatic event and there are different ways to do that. EMDR is a good way, prolonged exposure, um, which is one technique uh, of cognitive behavioral therapy is another good way to do that and they are both very effective. So, so you can choose between the therapies, it's not always EMDR. Exactly, treat for a patient. depends yeah. on the knowledge of the therapist right. and also the preference of the patient. But, but how long with EMDR does the effect last? Is it, is it healing the patient? 
It can be. There's a, a large proportion of patients that can really um, get healed with it. Right. A meta-analysis has shown that it's about 60 to 70 percent of patients uh, who complete such a therapy. Um, but of course, there are other cases where it can be more difficult also. Okay. One viewer from Vietnam, Gnan Lu, wants to know if there are pills to treat trauma. Uh, yeah, what, what role does medication play? Medication uh, can be used, um, but it's not really the solution. We know that psychotherapy needs to be done if people really have PTSD, uh, but there are some uh, pills, antidepressants, for instance, that can support the healing process. So they're not really um, working with the trauma itself, they are more working with the symptoms that accompany the trauma. Exactly. Okay. Does every traumatic experience need therapy, say, as a prophylactic? No, of course not. It's important for people to know uh, where they can turn to if they have had a very severe event and they, they don't feel good. And in most cases, uh, it will be watchful waiting. So for a couple of weeks, it's completely normal to have symptoms uh, after such an event. But if they endure uh, or they get worse, it's important really to seek help. So in most cases, you, you wouldn't need um, therapy at all. You've got just the normal resilience and you wait and see what happens. And it's normal that you're feel stressed out and traumatized after this kind of thing. So um, how can friends and relatives help tra traumatized patients? In, in my office, sometimes um, uh, patients with trauma and their relatives come and say, can we talk with him about the trauma or would we do some harm? Yeah, that's an important point. Relatives are often insecure um, how they can behave. And I think the most important thing is to support both sides, the survivor and the family, and to find out what really helps the survivor and uh, to make the family competent in the way they deal with uh, him or her. And it can be talking, and at times maybe it's just uh, leaving him or her alone. The yeah, um, right. important thing is to learn what works. So if you think you're in need for professional help, who should you go to? Yeah, in, in most uh, regions it will be the GP, the primary care system, uh, what uh, also is a good way is the internet. There are a couple of good apps that can be downloaded. There's the PTSD Coach, for example. That's the name of the app. That's the name of the app. Right. So self-help can also be a way. Great. Dr. Schiefer, thanks so much for being with us in good shape today. Thank you Thank very you. much.